As you remember, in 2008, 2009, the world had a bad problem because of too much debt. Since 2009, the debt, oh, the debt everywhere has skyrocketed. So the next problem has to be the worst in my lifetime because the debt is far, far, far the worst in any of our lifetimes. So when we have a problem, it has to be very bad next time. I think that's just simple analysis of what's going on in the world and how markets work. We've had the U.S. printing huge amounts of money. The Japanese, the head of the Bank of Japan said he would print his word, unlimited amounts of money, and they've all been printing huge amounts of money. And that has always led to inflation. It's leading to inflation again. The American Central Bank says, no, don't worry, we're not going to have inflation. And then they said it was transitory, it's temporary. Come on, these guys don't have a clue what they're doing. I think history is very clear that printing a lot of money always leads to inflation. We have that inflation. It's going to get worse. They may make some efforts to calm it down, and they will. But as long as they print money, and as the economies get bad again, they're going to print more money. You need to find ways to protect yourself, whether it's silver or sugar or rice, whatever it is. You need to be aware of of how inflation can hurt and that it's going to go on. It takes a long time to break it. You know, in the 70s, interest rates in America on treasury bills, treasury bills went to over 20% because things were so bad that the central bank had to do really strong, crazy things to break inflation. They did, but it took a lot of very serious efforts and it will again. Investors always should only invest in what they know. Do not listen to other people. Do not listen to hot tips. If you want to be successful, stay with what you know. Everybody knows a lot about cars or fashion or something. If you stay with what you know, then you know what to do when things go wrong and you know how to react. If you start listening to hot tips, you're going to suffer badly. I will tell you what I'm doing. Uh, but you should not do what I do unless you know a lot about them. Uh, bonds are certainly in a bubble all over the world. They've never been this expensive. Property in many places, Korea, New Zealand, parts of India, property has been in a bubble because of low interest rates. Some stocks have been forming bubbles, you know, Tencent, Samsung, these stocks never go down. The only asset class I know that's cheap is commodities. I mean, silver. Silver is down 70% from its all-time high. Sugar is down 70%. These are not bubble prices. These are assets that are still very low. And when you have inflation, if you own the things that go up in price, you make money. And when there's inflation, real assets, commodities usually go up. Well, I own energy. I plan to buy more. The world known reserves of oil continue to decline all over the world. Fracking came along and helped stop that decline, but the fracking bubble has burst now. We still have fracking, but it's not a bubble anymore. So known reserves continue to decline. Uh, We may have electric cars in the future, but if we do, electric cars use many times more copper and lead and lithium than petrol cars. So either way, there's gonna be more demand for commodities whether it's petrol cars or electric cars. So there's still increased demand and nobody's been opening lead mines for a long time. So there will be more opportunities in commodities and in energy. I understand some emerging markets have a lot of energy. Some have no energy and some must buy energy. If you are an emerging market that has energy, you're going to do well. If you're an emerging market that buys energy, you're Understood. going to suffer. It depends on what assets you have. Uh, as I look around, well, Uzbekistan is a, is a market where I've started buying an emerging market recently. Uh, most of the emerging markets were up a lot. Now they've come down. And I'm looking at, well, as I said, Uzbekistan as an emerging market where I've started buying shares. And I'm looking, I'm always looking for new markets. Well, Uzbekistan is a former Soviet Republic. You know, they were ruined by the communists. Uh, and the guy who was running Uzbekistan was one of the worst. But now there's a new crowd of people and they're trying to open the economy and run it the way you would run it or the way I would run it. It's very cheap. Lots of natural resources, lots of tourist resources. Oh, my gosh, it's a great tourist, potentially a great tourist country. 
there are many things there, and maybe they're going to be managed properly now. And maybe it's, I know it's very cheap. And if it's managed properly now, maybe I'll make some money. Well, I certainly don't like what the U.S. is doing in China. The U.S. seems to hit, hit, hit. When a country has problems, they always blame foreigners. And China's easy to blame. It's big and different. And Mr. Trump and now Mr. Biden both like to blame China for our problems. Uh, and there's more of that. It's not good for the world. It's not good for America. It's not good for China. But the way politicians have worked all over the world for hundreds of years, and I'm afraid it's going to get worse because when the world economy gets worse, more blame is going to go around. China has been somewhat restrained, but China's hitting back now. They have to. So no, it's not a good situation. I mean, it could lead to a shooting war. It's not a prediction. I'm just saying, though, when people start hitting each other, sometimes so you, it turns into so would, more than just a trade war. It might turn into a shooting war. China is going to be a very successful country in the 21st century. Doesn't mean it won't have problems. America became the most successful country in the 20th century. But along the way, we had many depressions, massacres in the streets, civil war. We had many problems, but we still became a very successful nation. China will have many problems. But in my view, I don't see anybody else who can be as successful as China in the 21st century. Well, if with one thing, it makes it more competitive. It makes it easier to sell to the U.S. It also means that your the things you buy, such as raw materials, will be up in price. So it has a serious effect on many countries. But it can help countries be more competitive, at least in the short term. And that will help people sell to the U.S. and sell to other countries too, since many nations deal in U.S. dollars. First of all, I don't like to. Believe in belief. I don't like to make investments based on belief. I try to make my investments based on hard research and fact finding, and find out what is really going on, not what I believe or not what I want. Many people are trading cryptos and making money. Part of the problem, of course, is that many have already disappeared. Many many cryptos have gone to zero already.、Um, there are still many around. In my view. Now the crypto bulls, the crypto optimists, say that this is going to be the new money. Now every, nearly every country in the world is working on putting money on the computer. In China, you cannot, you cannot buy a taxi, take a taxi with money. You have to have your computer money. You cannot buy an ice cream in China with money. You have to put it here. But when America says, "Okay, this is now money." I don't think that the American government is going to say, "But you want to use that? You can use that money too if you want to." That's not the way politicians and bureaucrats think. They want control. They want power. So I would suspect that crypto money will not be legal in most countries. We will have crypto money, but it will be government crypto money. So I've never bought or sold it. I want to emphasize that people should invest only in what they know. Not what other people tell them. Not hot tips. Only stay with what you know. If I told you you can only have twenty investments in your life, be very careful, and you'd probably be a very successful investor over the long term, over the years. Some people say, "Well, that's boring." Be boring. If you want to be a successful investor, don't worry about being boring. Stay with what you know. Everybody watching this knows a lot about something. Find your opportunities there. And invest there, and you will be a very successful investor.